ever since the Arab Spring had occurred more than 10 years ago, Europe has taken in over millions of refugees in, and the results have been catastrophic. Ever since then, Europe has seen mass terrorist attacks occur right at its doorsteps, with it experiencing a rise in mass child grooming gangs, establishments of no-go zones preventing the native home population from going into migrant communities and the plethora of other issues the continent faces. In the UK, for example, more British Muslims were fighting for ISIS than the British military itself. While on the other hand, Sweden has seen an epidemic of grenade attacks occurring right at its soil, committed mostly by migrant communities, with it experiencing over 134 grenade attacks this year alone and over 90 last year, all of which were overwhelmingly committed by migrants. And in the case of France, they had just experienced race riots this year over over a 17-year-old Algerian boy who stole a vehicle and resisted arrest up till the point of his death by French police. France had just experienced George Floyd racial riots that America faced more than three years ago, and France doesn't even have as big of a minority population as America does. Currently, I am writing this video during the whole Israel-Palestine conflict, and it's very interesting to see the divide between the native population and the immigrant population on the conflict itself. Obviously, the native European population supports Israel, whilst the immigrant population supports Palestine with some going even as far as to doing terrorist attacks. This divide has forced the European left into a very awkward position, as it has to reconcile with the fact that the majority of the immigrant population hasn't fully assimilated into European cultures. This is something the right wing has been warning about for the past 10 or so years, but each time it gets brought up, it always gets dismissed by the left as either racist or Islamophobic rhetoric used to spread hate. However, the Israel-Palestine conflict has forced the left to see the divide between the native European population and the migrants. We now have liberal and leftist politicians talking about speeding up deportations and taking in less migrants with some proposing the possibility of cutting benefits for them. Now at this point, I think it's important to ask why. Why did Europe take so many immigrants, and what were they thinking? In this video, I will attempt to explain the thought process of European elites and why they opened Europe's borders for immigration and why they keep important immigrants despite the many failures immigration has brought on Europe. I will also explore the future of Europe and what effects immigration might have on the long term. Like many things in the modern world, you can trace back Europe's immigration crisis solely to the 2008 financial crash. The truth is that Europe's economy has been stagnant since then, at least when you compare it to America. Sure, Europeans live some of the best lives on the planet, but the reality is that the average European hasn't really gotten richer since 2008. And if things didn't turn out as badly as they did, then the average European would be much richer and overall living a much better lifestyle on top of the already good European living conditions. It also didn't help that the European financial crisis basically crippled Europe's birth rates and soared unemployment through the roof. During that time, Europe was facing a worker shortage. The crash created an unemployment crisis in Europe in which the European elites knew they couldn't fix with their already pre-existing populations. As for one, their population was already experiencing aging as well as many of the jobs and businesses that needed employment were low-skilled labor jobs that weren't desirable by the average European. Many European elites knew about this, however, they really couldn't do anything about it as they didn't have the resources to fix it. Luckily for them, a couple years later, the Arab Spring would occur with civil wars and conflict erupting around the Middle Eastern North Africa region. This served excellent news for them as a new market opened up for them in which they could use cheap, low-skilled labor they could use to fuel the European economy from these war-torn regions. Europe also looked at the United States and its immigration policies and how successful it was in fueling the American economy and helping the country get back on the right track. Essentially, the European elite looked at the United States immigration policies and its success and thought they could replicate it the same with Europe. After all, the Europeans are much more tolerant and so much better than those filthy rednecks across the Atlantic, right? 
If the filthy American rednecks can have so much success with its immigration policies, then surely Europe could do the same thing, right? And even do it better than them. The thing these European elites don't understand is that America is not a nation state like many in Europe. Ever since 1776, the United States had always had immigration within its country. The US has had a history of taking migrants from other countries and trying to assimilate them into the American culture. Essentially, migrants would come into the U.S., not know any English or not know anybody from this land. Sometimes they might come in with another ethnic group that also is in a similar predicament as to them. Many of these migrants would quickly settle into a city or go to a rural or small town and take their time and pace to settle and assimilate within the native community. The U.S. is a very big country, so this was very plausible for many migrants during that time and even to this day. You don't like living in a city like Boston, New York, or Philadelphia, then you can just move to a rural community or small town in central Pennsylvania, Ohio, or Virginia. And you can still expect a level of cultural similarity when moving from a big city to a small town or vice versa. As at the end of the day, you're both still American and share similar values to one another. In Europe, you really don't have this as the countries are very small in comparison to the massive size of the United States. So that level of dynamism doesn't exist. Let's say you live in France and you really don't like the way how the country is running. So you move to another country like Poland. By moving there, you're going to have to try and learn a new language, new customs and new values to take in. As the Poles are very different from the French. Someone from Texas isn't really all that different from someone from California. Aside from the small trivial things that often get memed about. Another important factor which no one talks about. Which is that many of these European countries really never had a history or experience in the past. Of taking in mass refugees especially from those in the third world. And assimilating them into the society and culture. In fact, in some cases, the opposite would occur in which a European country would go out and colonize a tribe or a, a country in either Africa or the Middle East and would try to impose their values and their way of living onto them forcefully. This, you can imagine, creates a lot of resentment in many of these immigrant population as they probably came from a European country that at some point in time was colonized, which creates a level of generational resentment. A lot of migrants would, they see colonialism as one of the big reasons as to why their country is in decline and why they had to leave in the first place, which is the fault of a European power. And that European power is probably a country they're going to visit. So naturally, a lot of resentment would be born out of it. Now, I'm not saying that the groups I mentioned are necessarily bad or immigrants as a whole. What I am saying is that there's clearly a problem with assimilation. The truth is that immigration can actually be a very positive thing on a country if that country manages to assimilate their immigrant population well. The prime example, of course, is the United States with it attracting some of the smartest and hardest working people around the world and successfully assimilating those people into the broader American culture and society. In terms diversity is our strength and a nation of immigrants originated from America. I know to some these phrases might seem cringe or something a liberal might say to push for immigration and advocate for open borders. But there is an element of truth to these statements. Europe, on the other hand, hasn't really assimilated their immigrants, which has caused them a lot of problems. Most Europeans, including a decent portion of the left, feel as if the immigration has become a problem within their country. This is especially true within countries that have taken in the most Muslim migrants, i.e. Britain, France, or Germany. France's case is particularly special in Europe as they faced a worldwide Muslim boycott over a terrorist attack in which the victim of the attack drew the Prophet Muhammad, which is forbidden in Islam. France is also the country that has faced the most amount of terrorist attacks in Europe. I think at this point, it's safe to say that immigration has largely failed in Europe. And I think the main reason as to why this is the case is because Europe isn't really built for mass immigration in the first place. Europe is a continent that spent the last 1000 years going to war with itself and that only stopped about like 70 years ago. Do you think a continent that spent the majority of its existence being at war with itself to being a liberal utopia that easily takes in and assimilates non-European groups within their society? I mean for Christ's sakes, most Europeans don't even get along with each other anyways. Do you think somehow they'll get along better with a group of non-Europeans that doesn't share their values, doesn't share their religion, and mostly hates them anyways? Yeah, I thought so. 
The European elite's greatest mistake was believing in their greatness too much. Due to the good European living conditions, as well as the end to all wars within the continent and generally being very peaceful, these people thought that they were the peak and apex of humanity and tried projecting that to other parts of the world. These people thought that the migrants would just come in and would be so amazed by the already good European living conditions that they would immediately assimilate into the culture and the society as a whole without any issues or any problems. These people are delusional. Even with America, which has historically had the best immigration record in the whole world, has struggled with immigration and has had to shut immigration down multiple times in its history to keep the country stable, with some even calling for it today. One of the things that's always confused people is how certain right-wing governments have been open to and accepting of mass immigration from non-European countries. The obvious example of this is Poland. Poland is a nation that's been praised by right-wingers for its anti-immigration stance, which had gotten it in trouble in the past with the liberal EU. However, Poland never backed down on its anti-immigration stance until now. Since then, Poland has opened up its borders and made it easier for non-EU citizens to get in the country, with a plan to accept about less than 400,000 migrants a year. And Poland isn't the only example of this, as other European countries with right-wing governments such as the UK, Italy, or Czechia have loosened their immigration laws to allow more immigrants within their country. The notion that leftists or liberals being the only ones open to immigration is clearly false as many right-wing European governments have done the same thing. And the main reason as to why many European governments are doing this is to keep their economies stable. Europe is a continent facing mass unemployment, especially in the south, as well as a decline in birth rates. And what's worse is that Europe is a continent that's aging and not getting any younger, which makes it harder to solve these problems. We are now reaching the age in which many Europeans are retiring, and many young people can't fill the void left behind by the retirees. And in many cases, there aren't enough young people to support the retirees. So Europe has no other choice but to resort to immigration. Europe was already facing these issues for the past 20 or so years, but they've really made themselves public recently. Europe's economy has been stagnant since COVID, and Germany, the largest economy in Europe, is on the brink of entering recession. Earlier on in the video, I mentioned the French riots that happened a couple years ago. What I didn't mention was the fact that one of the main reasons as to why those riots happened was because France had raised the retirement age. The French government did this due to their declining demographics and aging population. And what's worse for the French government, which is that the demographic situation isn't going to get much better, which means that this problem is going to get much worse. At this point, I won't be surprised if France has another revolution in the future, just like it did many times in the past before. In short, the immigration isn't going to stop. The European demographic situation isn't going to get any better, and these countries need the immigrants to keep the economy flowing as well as the European pension system that keeps the population happy. Modern Europe has developed its identity with its good standards of living, which is supplied by its welfare state. Europeans love to brag about how good their living conditions are, especially to Americans. But as the economy gets worse, so will the living conditions. And thus, a crisis of confidence will occur in Europe. Hopefully the continent fixes its issues, or else it becomes the dying museum of the world. However, that will happen later rather than sooner. You can expect the rise of radical right-wing and left-wing ideologies, and the dying of the old liberal establishment. You can see this already happening in Germany with the rise of the right-wing AFD party, as well as the rise of other nefarious parties. In short, Europe will continue to take in more migrants as things get worse, but hopefully the decline will be peaceful rather than bloody or violent. If you're a European and you're watching this video, I just want to say good luck as you will definitely need it in the future.